All right. Uh, good day, everyone, and welcome to my presentation on short-term rentals, an investor guide for Orlando in 2020. My name is Mark Younger. I'm a realtor here in Orlando, Kissimmee, uh, for Global Resort Homes. So I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, this is a, a little comic of uh, representation of me. Uh, I was living in Montreal, uh, freezing my butt off. Uh, I was a financial advisor with over a thousand clients. Uh, I would drive to, to people's houses and talk to them about investments and um, insurance products for their family, protecting their mortgage and their assets. Uh, had to drive in this uh, cold and ice weather all the time, uh, as some of you might still have to do. Uh, personally, I got tired of it and kind of uh, decided I wanted to move down to Orlando. We had taken some family vacations together, decided that with all the things to do in Orlando, from uh, Disney to Universal to mini golfing uh, to... Uh, real golfing to being able to go to the beach and having uh, hot springs nearby. Uh, we just absolutely love it here. There's so much to do. Uh, in Montreal, I always found myself either going to the mall or going to the trampoline place with my kids and uh, repeating that over and over and over. So I absolutely love living here. So to get here, um, I sold my fourplex in Laval. I sold my financial advice business. Um, my thousand clients. Um, the reason I sold my fourplex in Laval was it was just getting unruly with the Quebec rules that are strongly in favor of tenants. Uh, some of you who have properties know that you know when a, when a tenant uh, doesn't pay the rent, it's very difficult. You have to go in front of the board, and it's just a very very long process. Uh, I had to consistently fix, maintain, renovate after people left, which ate up my profits a lot of times. Uh, it's very long and hard to evict in Quebec, and so I was just tired of it and decided that uh, I would move down here. I made a business uh, buying mortgage notes back when there was a lot of foreclosures. Eventually, mortgage notes and bankruptcies and foreclosures dried up, so I've been, uh, I changed into the vacation rental business, which is a booming business down here, 75 million tourists come to Orlando. We are the number one tourist destination in the United States, bar none. And so it makes for a lot of vacation rentals, a lot of vacationers, and a lot of people that want to be here. So I love what I do now. I love helping people find their second homes, their vacation homes, and finding something that could be a good investment that could pay for itself out, off, and at the same time, uh, make some cash flow for people. So why would you invest in Florida? Well, in terms of growth, uh, in terms of an investment, I always look for something that's growing. I look for something where there's uh, demand and Florida is very in demand. Uh, Florida is number three in job creation, 213,000 new private sector jobs in 2018, very, very low, 3.3% unemployment. In Canada, you're in the fives. Um, Florida created 2.8% more jobs in 2019. Uh, the United States only 2.1. Uh, there's a net migration that adds $17.2 billion to the Florida economy. And there's 330,000 uh, new people that come in net migration to Florida. So there's 500 and 50,000 people that came last year, 180,000 left. So we actually had a net of 330,000 new Floridians last year, just in one year alone. So there is a thousand people moving to Florida a day. And that's more than double the second state, which is Texas. And it's more than any other state. Here you have an example. The red states are where people are leaving, the black states are where people are going, and Florida is by far bringing in the most amount of people. Um, more Floridians means more staycations too. When people don't have to travel from Maine 
all the way down to Florida, where they, they can travel from Florida to Orlando. It also means more staycations, which means more bookings for short-term rentals as well. Well, why specifically choose Orlando? So the, probably the same reason I chose and 75 million other people chose to come to Orlando. There's just so much fun stuff to do here. Everybody thinks of Disney, everybody knows Disney, but there's also Universal who's got two and soon a third park that's coming. We've got SeaWorld, uh, we have Legoland, uh, we have Natural Hot Springs, um, uh, or Natural Springs actually as well, like Wakaiva Springs. A lot of people come for the nature. Um, there's beautiful birds everywhere here um, in the nature neighborhoods and everything so you're close you're an hour away from each side of the beach so you've got the gulf which is just over an hour away and you've got the atlantic which is just over an hour away there's cape canaveral and all the nasa uh activities to do so there's just a ton a ton a ton of things and orlando is a very tourist town so there's a lot of uh escape rooms and uh shows and um, there's just a, a ton of things to do when you come here. So people just love it. We've been here many years and there's still, we haven't done everything yet. Uh, in terms of growth, so on top of, of being number one, we're growing by 4.2% in American tourists uh, over last year, 5.4% uh, over uh, 2018, I, I should say, in international tourists as well. So every year it grows by about four to five percent. Eight straight years now, we've established Florida has established a tourist record, welcoming 126 million visitors, and 60 percent of them, or 75 million, came to Orlando. And that number is in 2019, the first quarter was a 5.8 percent increase on the same quarter in 2018. So what is the strategy? So why choose Orlando? Well, you can do year-long rentals, not seasonal rentals here. So instead of having somebody that stays in, in your condo on the beach for four months and then you're struggling to rent it the rest of the year, you've got year-long tourism. And you can do it nightly, which gets you a much higher return than somebody who's staying monthly. So by staying nightly rates, you're, you can get three, four, five hundred dollars a night uh, in a six, seven bedroom home rather than getting one hundred and fifty dollars a night in a two bedroom condo on the beach. Uh, there's a lot of growth in the tourism here. Uh, not every state can say that, uh, but Florida is definitely booming. Um, Disney never almost never closes. It's only closed four times since 1971. So it is always open. So whereas a hurricane in Miami can close down Miami for months and devastate your bookings, um, you know, there's, there's really not that hurricane risk up here in Orlando because we're halfway up the state uh, and we're tucked right in the middle of the state. So we're not on the coast. We're not on the Gulf side. We're, you know, an hour and a half away from each of those things. And we're four hours north of Miami. So by the time a hurricane hits Miami, slows down, turns into a category four or three, two, one, might be a tropical storm or just a bit of rain by the time it gets up to Orlando. So Disney never closes, Universal never needs to close. And so tourism can go on almost 300 or actually 365 days a year. Uh, they don't even close at Christmas. Uh, they go year round every day. So people can come all year round and you can get bookings all year round. Uh, there's not the flooding either. When you invest on the coast on a beach property, uh, there's flooding, there's salt erosion, and there's really none of that when you come to Orlando because we're right in the middle of the state. Um, so we don't have that salt water erosion. We don't have all those issues that a beach property can have. And yet, we're just an hour from each beach. So if people do want to go, they can. So here's an example of a fiveplex, one hour from Montreal in St. Jerome, that is actually up on the MLS right now, as compared to buying a six-bedroom house five minutes from Disney. 
Now this first example here is gonna have property management completely included on both sides. So you pay a property manager to manage this for you if you had it uh, in Montreal. And on, on this side, on the right-hand side, you will have a property manager that will completely book uh, all of the people for you. They will take care of guest relations. They take care of absolutely everything. You have nothing to do. It's completely passive for you. So in this example, uh, the house on the right with, with the pool and the beautiful landscaping and the beautiful interior was built in 2015. The fiveplex on the left-hand side uh, was built in 1982. So you can only imagine how much less maintenance there is on a 2015 house than something built in 1982 or the 70s or the 60s for that matter, which is commonplace in multifamily in and around Montreal. Uh, the gross revenue. So here I took, uh, I under promise and over deliver. So I took a 55% occupation rate at the, the average daily rate, five minutes from Disney. This community here is called Paradise Palms. And uh, despite the average really being 64%, I took a 55% to really give you guys an example that had some, um, some space built in uh, to it. And that would come out with a 59,850 gross revenue as opposed to 28,102 US on the side of the five class. Insurance is less. Uh, taxes are a little bit more. AC, water, and maintenance all inclusive is about the same. Same mortgage. So the both houses cost 350,000 US uh, or both properties. Uh, so the mortgage there would be a mortgage with one of the Canadian banks that would use your Canadian credit and would allow you to buy this property. Both mortgages would be the same, obviously. And these mortgages are a typical 30-year mortgage here um, at 3.5%. Uh, the Canadian mortgage would be at 25 years, but I, I extended it to try to give you an equal example here to 30 years on both sides. Management fees are about the same. Uh, obviously, with a fiveplex, they would take 10%. Uh, here, the management fees are uh, a little bit less, um, but there's cleanings. So they have to have a, a, somebody come in and clean every week, which you don't have to do with a fiveplex. So there is that extra cost there. The vacancies, though, are only on the fiveplex side because we're already taking them into consideration. Uh, at 55% occupation here on the right-hand side. Uh, the commission for booking, so this is paying a property management company like Global or another company, 20%, uh, which is the industry average for doing all the hard work, all the heavy lifting of making those websites, uh, maintaining those relationships, having the staff 24 hours to answer the phone. Uh, some people can call from Brazil, Mexico, Europe, and they will answer the phone and make sure that those people have everything they need to, to have a great stay in your property. Uh, the HOA fees is something that is more unique to Florida, um, where the homeowner association, as you see the beautiful landscaping that is in front and back of all these homes, um, that has a cost to it. So the HOA fees covers the pool cleaning, covers the landscaping, covers the cable, covers the internet, and covers the resort-style pools that are in these beautiful communities. So some of these have water slides, they have surf simulators, they have uh, world-class clubhouses with restaurants, and all of that is included in your HOA fee. Uh, so your total, so on the right-hand side, you're with all these expenses, you still have 9,546 or an 11% return. Whereas on the left hand side in Montreal, you're actually not cash flowing. Most properties now, the properties have gone up so much in the Montreal, Toronto, and Vancouver region that generally people, their, their impression is that nothing really cash flows in Montreal unless you really have a fixer upper, and then you're having to pour a ton of money into a property to get it back up. But the general property that's turnkey, that has little work to do to it, 
uh, you're not going to be able to cash flow it in the Montreal region or even an hour away from Montreal today. Uh, whereas over here on a, a six bedroom house, five minutes from Disney, there's so much demand for short term rentals that you will be able to cash flow it. On top of that, you could use it for vacations. So I don't know if you want to go and uh, vacation in St. Jerome or St. Hippolyte, but uh, I definitely know that people want to come and uh, come down to Orlando. So you'd be able to use it as much as you want per year, and uh, your family would be able to make all these new memories, and you'd still be able to make money uh, on that property. So here's the same example, but self-managed. So a lot of people are telling me, well, Mark, you know, I could put up an ad on Airbnb uh, once I buy the property and uh, manage that myself. So when people call in, I can answer the phone. I can tell them all about my property. And uh, with electronic locks today, you just give them a passcode. And when they come in, uh, they can unlock the door and, and have their one week vacation. And then when they leave, you just call your cleaning lady and tell her to clean up. So more. Or some people who have a little bit more time on their hands that don't mind doing that work, uh, it could be even more profitable. So here you have most of the things being the same on the right-hand side, except the booking fees will only be 1500 instead of over 10000 because you're doing the booking yourself. So what that does is, yes, you still have to pay your cleaning lady, uh, but except for that, you have some lesser expenses and you get left with a 15 or 16 percent return instead of an 11 percent return in this example now these examples are not guaranteed but i did use real examples uh on a really average or below average of what could be done here in orlando when you're five minutes to ten minutes from disney because there is so much demand uh for those properties so just to prove what I'm saying, rental, uh, sorry, realtor.com did a study in 2019, very recently, and found that Orlando was the number two city in all of the United States uh, in terms of profitable places to own an Airbnb uh, rental. And the reason is tourism. Uh, pe people come here, people love it here, uh, people love Florida, and people love Orlando. High-speed trains are coming. Uh, so when I look at investing somewhere, I want to make sure there's going to be even more growth in the next three years. And Orlando has that. So why does it have that? Uh, well, one of the reasons is Brightline Trains, uh, who has presently has a high-speed high speed rail service between West Palm Beach, Fort Lauderdale, and Miami, is expanding to Orlando in 2022. So 2022 is not the time to make your move. You want to make your move before and take advantage of what's coming. So 2.2 million more tourists are predicted to come to Orlando from those three places because now they're going to be able to come to Orlando directly with the high-speed train, which is only going to take three hours from Miami, whereas right now you've got to deal with traffic, uh, you know, you've got to deal with all of uh, and it usually about a four to four and a half hour commute from Miami to Orlando. Uh, whereas now you're going to be able to do it in three hours, not have to drive. Uh, you simply come into Orlando airport and then you'd be able to grab a rental car or take an Uber to your property. And then uh, just after that, they are presently since November in negotiation with Disney to build a Disney terminal, which would follow probably in 2023, and then Tampa as well in 2023, 2024. So now you'd be bringing people from Miami, Fort Lauderdale, West Palm Beach, Jupiter, Stewart, Vero Beach, Melbourne, Cocoa Beach, and Tampa uh, all into Orlando. Because let's be honest, it's gonna be one-way traffic. More people are gonna be coming up to Orlando then are going to be going down uh, the other way. Epic Universe. So for many years now, um, Universal Studios has had two parks, Universal Studios and Islands of Adventure. Uh, it's been that way since the 90s and the 2000s, 
Uh, but now, Epic Universe is coming. So they have officially bought the land and they are starting construction on Su Epic Universe, which has Super Nintendo World as its flagship uh, land. And there's going to be four lands to start with, uh, which are going to be, the other three are going to be announced soon. Uh, one is How to Train Your Dragon, which is a property that's owned by Universal, a movie franchise that's owned by them. And they're also going to have a Pokemon gym, which is huge uh, with kids. So we're going to have all those franchises in this epic universe to start with the four lands in 2023. There's going to be space for expansion for another three lands, which means they're going to continue to add and continue to grow with time. So already announced Super Nintendo World, Rides that are going to include Donkey Kong, Mario Kart, and Yoshi, the Pokemon Gym. And already we know that Universal Studios and Islands of Adventure bring in 19 million visitors last year. So a new park should probably bring in about uh, a 10 million visitors as well, and maybe even more because of the, you know, the brand new effect. So it's going to be quite exciting, the effect on bookings when you've got an additional 2 million people coming by train, and an additional 10 million people coming for these parks. It's, it's the most important new park since Disney's Animal Kingdom in 1998. So Disney is not resting on its laurels. Disney's realizing that, that Universal is coming to life and starting to really make a move. So Disney's striking back. Uh, Universal Studios is getting uh, this year just built Star Wars Galaxy's Edge and Toy Story Land, which each have uh, two and three rides each. And they're just finishing construction on Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway at, at Hollywood Studios. Epcot is getting a whole makeover as well with Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind, Ratatouille Remy's Adventure, and Moana, The Journey of Water, which are going to bring in a ton of people because all three of those are huge franchises. Magic Kingdom, for the 50th anniversary of Magic Kingdom uh, 1971 to 2021, is bringing in a whole new thrill ride as well with Tron Light Cycle. And Disney Cirque du Soleil, um is opening up in disney springs so it, they used to have a show called la nuba which closed down about two years ago and disney bought it to remake it into drawn to life so that it could have a disney theme with all disney characters and really increase how many people are going to come to the cirque du soleil in disney springs The airport. So the airport is increasing its capacity in phase one of Terminal C. So they're building a brand new terminal. We have two terminals right now. A third terminal is opening and they're going to have three phases. Just the first phase alone is expanding the airport's capacity by 20%. So the big players know that more tourism is coming on the way in the next three years. And so they are ramping up with the airport, with the trains, to make sure that they're able to have uh, that capacity to meet the demand. So let me go over with you how short-term rentals work here. So whereas in Quebec or in Toronto or wherever you are, most things are in Canada are done by cities. So city limits, right? Uh, here, Everything is done by county. So Orange County is pretty much the big red square that you see here. And because a lot of people live, their personal homes are in this section, they have a rule that outlawed, except for certain exceptions, very, very few exceptions, you cannot do a short-term rental in the red section here. So Osceola and Polk County, which are the in the green section underneath, took huge advantage of this in the last few years and have really promoted the growth of short-term rentals uh, down here in the green section. So what happens is 
builders are building in this section here, just underneath Disney. So you see it's just on the line of Hollywood Studios, just underneath Animal Kingdom, Epcot, and Magic Kingdom. And so this is where everything is getting built. So if you own a short-term rental, chances are you own it in this green section, and chances are you own it, if you're smart, as close to Disney as possible. Because that's really where the demand is. People want to be, they don't want to stay in a tiny 300 square foot hotel room anymore. They want to have a whole house for them and their family. A lot of people are traveling in groups of four, six, eight, 10, 12. They want to have a whole family vacation and they want the room to have fun. So they like to have a pool in the backyard. They like to have a community pool. They like to have a lazy river. They like to have a tiki bar. They like to have surf simulators and all kinds of other fun things for the kids, but they want to be close to Disney. They don't want to be an hour away either. So why Orlando? Orlando is 34% less expensive than Miami. So right off the bat, you get more bang for your buck than you do in a beach condo. Uh, and a beach condo usually being a two bedroom you're not going to be able to go get as much per night in the day in the nightly rate than you are in a six bedroom, for example, in Orlando, that's five minutes from Disney. It's commonplace to see uh, properties get three and four hundred dollars a night in Orlando, whereas if you're on the beach, uh, you might get a hundred and fifty dollars a night because you've only got a two bedroom property for the same price. It's 28% less expensive than Fort Lauderdale as well. Uh, just the comparables are, are stunning. You know, a six bedroom, beautiful house with all the landscaping and everything, a brand new home, 350,000 compared to an older two bedroom condo. You've got a lot more going for you as well. You've got Disney, Universal, Legoland, SeaWorld, um, and a ton of activities, uh, secondary activities to do, like the mini golfs, like the escape rooms, like uh, all the other stuff that we have here uh, for tourists, uh, as opposed to just having the beach and only the beach. Uh, rentals 365 days a year, so Disney barely ever closes, whereas you have a seasonal, um, you really have a limited season when you're on the beach uh, because people don't want to be using the beach when it's freezing. Snowbirds come down for the general temperature, but you know people that want to be on the beach um, really don't like it when the water's freezing. So the process of buying a home down here is quite simple. The first thing we need to do is qualify you. And I work with both Canadian banks that will use your Canadian credit and American mortgage brokers who can use uh, either your Canadian credit or can use the monthly rental income to qualify. So what's great about these properties is if you own properties and you're not able to scale in Canada, because they don't let you buy more than four properties or they jam you at the 43% uh, debt ratio. Uh, you've, got, you've got American banks here who will allow you based on how much the uh, monthly uh, predicted rental rate will be, they can let you, if the property cash flows, they'll let you buy it as long as you put your cash down. So that's a huge advantage that we have here in the United States that you don't in Canada. Generally, banks in Canada are difficult with investors. Uh, they'll let you buy one or two properties, and then they really, after three or four, generally after four, it's a hard stop. So the second step is research. So my job is to help you reach your goals and find vacation homes that'll create lasting memories for your family. So we start with listings. We have a discussion about, you know, what are your objectives? What are your goals? And then it kind of gives me an idea what communities you're going to. So do you want to buy a condo, a condo tell? Uh, do you want a townhouse or do you want a single family home? And, you know, then I'll send you some communities and you can see the amenities. So like you see here in the middle, some of these have these absolutely gorgeous resort style pools. You've got fountains, you've got lazy rivers, you've got mini golfs at some communities like it's uh tiki bars they play all kinds of games they take care of your kids it's absolutely amazing what they have at these resorts 
And so we'll start to narrow down the list with some listings. And then once you've really figured out what you're looking for and we've got it down to a few, then I encourage you to come down and see for yourself. So come take a little vacation. Uh, you know, we've even got, got some stay and play packages where you can come down. And then once you buy the home with me, um, you know, I'll reimburse you for your, your vacation down here. So you get a vacation, you get to pick up a property, the property pays for itself and your vacation gets reimbursed. So it's win-win for everybody. So how do you increase your revenues? So you buy a property and maybe it's doing, you know, 50, 60,000 in revenues. How do you get to that 100, 120, 130,000, or even that 200,000 uh, that everybody's looking for? Well, you've got to distinguish yourself. What works here is a combination of a great property, a great location, and a great theming. So these people here that have made these themes that you see have really gone all out. And these properties... Uh, are getting over $100,000 a year because they've themed it properly. So you can, you can go as little as some wallpaper and some pictures like the minion picture here on the top right, or you can go all out and make a game room with computers. The teenagers are going to go nuts. And those types of properties will go easily fetch over $100,000 and sometimes even as much as $150,000, $200,000 because there's so much demand. They're booked up constantly. You're getting 90 to 100% of the time that it's booked. And people are playing top dollar because kids are going, wow, look at this. I want this place. And even mom and dad are going, wow, this is amazing. We want to go here too. A lot of times the parents are just as big fans of Harry Potter, Star Wars, and all of the other franchises that exist here than as the kids are. So. Mark, show me some real examples. Well, here's some real properties that I found on AirDNA, which is a software that I have a subscription to, which allows me to show you each property, what they declared to Airbnb last year. So they always have to do a report to Airbnb, what their occupancy rate was, what their average daily rate was, how many days they made it available. So some people use their property more than others and how much revenue did they make? So this house here uh, had 360 days available. So they used it for themselves five days out of the year. They had an average daily rate of 856 per night. They had an 81% occupancy and they made $250,000. Now, obviously they were five minutes from Disney. Uh, Solera is a great resort. It's got great amenities. This is a, a bigger example of that same house. So they've got this beautiful on the left-hand side, what you're seeing there, that big blue thing is a surf simulator. So teenagers, kids alike, they absolutely love this thing. They want to go to a resort that's got a surf simulator and uh, there's very few that have it. So when you, when you get it in the community, there's so much demand for these extra things like this. Now they went all out on their house and they put some nice theming. This could be done really easily with some frames here. You see the yellow frame on top with the Disney uh, frames. Those frames can be bought really cheaply online. And you know you just make a wood frame around it, uh, some MDF, and it's a really easy thing to do. You pick some nice colors and there you go. You've got an absolutely beautiful room. Didn't cost you much. Same thing with their Spider-Man, Iron Man theme here. Looks completely professional. Doesn't cost much to do. Downstairs, a lot of communities, that's what they look like. Uh, these 2015 and up homes, this is what you're going to get inside. Just a beautiful home, uh, very classy. Uh, and when people see pictures of this, they go nuts and they want to rent them. On the right-hand side, we have this beautiful uh, game room, which is actually a garage, uh, which they covered up with some tile, covered up with some uh, Avatar pictures from the movie Avatar and uh, made it look really, really cool. Put a couple of gaming chairs and a couple of benches, and there you go. Uh, people see this, the kids go, wow, this is going to be an awesome time. Uh, add an air hockey table and a foosball table, and you've got something that's going to be in demand 90 to 100% of the time. And at $343 per night, and I pulled this up at the beginning of February in low season, you could see why people are going to pay 500 in 
mid-season, 800 in full season, and even up to $1,000 a night to stay in this great home. And it's a seven bedroom. So what a lot of people do, they'll do their whole family vacation. They'll bring down auntie and uncle, grandma and grandpa, you know, mom and dad, and, you know, they'll share the cost. So, you know, at uh, four families staying in a seven bedroom, it only costs them about $80 a night in, uh, in low season and maybe about 150 a night in high season. So it's very affordable. And look at the, what you get as opposed to staying in a little 300 square foot hotel room with two beds. This same family with, uh, would probably have to take four bedrooms at Disney at $400 a night, $1,600 a night, uh, and all they would get is four uh, little hotel rooms as opposed to this big, beautiful home. And they can save money by making their own meals and create memories by eating together rather than always going out to the restaurant. And this is a bit more of a modest example, but a great example as well. These people are getting $303 a night for a five bedroom home with a pool in Paradise Palms. So this house, uh, you know, very beautiful, but doesn't have all the theming that the other home did, but they're still getting $303 a night in the middle of February. So probably about five to $600 a night in the summer. And, uh, and they were able to make if you look down here, 115,000 of revenue on this five bedroom home and the five bedroom homes are going for only $320,000 right now. So, you know, imagine having a property that you have to put about a 60 to $70,000 down payment on and you're making 115,000 of gross revenue a year on. So that's really, you know, what we're shooting for is this kind of 88% occupancy is fantastic average daily rate of 380. They used it for about 18 days last year. So they took a nice two and a half week vacation, or they might've taken a one week vacation and sent their family for the rest of the time. And the rest of the time they had it rented out and they made a huge amount of money on it. So there's tons of opportunities. These are just two examples that I give you, uh, but there are a ton more. So feel free to get in touch with me if this concept interests you, coming down to Florida, uh, owning your own place here interests you. Uh, I can absolutely help you with that and uh, have you have a property that pays for itself and uh, that you can use anytime you want as well. So it's been a pleasure. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation and feel free to get a hold of me either by email or by cell phone here. And I thank you very much.